Good morning. And to those gathered here and to those who are gathered with us online, welcome to worship in Jesus' name on this first Sunday in Advent. Um, during this Advent season, we're using the theme, This Will Be a Sign for You. So each week, talking about a sign of Jesus coming. And along with that, um, each week we have a take home. It's just a brief devotional. Um, it will have the, uh, the hymn and readings that we're using in worship, but it also has a reading for each day. So those are on the usher table that are out just outside the center door. So if you would like one of those for your Advent devotions. And when we get to this part of the service, the way this, this one works this year, it's like our opening hymn, Advent song, but we'll sing a verse of the hymn, do a responsive reading, sing a verse reading back and forth. So it's, I think it will be clear, but these will be available um, each week of Advent. So if you'd like those. Also, there are some window Advent calendars to open also out there on the ushers table if you would like one of those as well. And the last thing that you can pick up on the table is there are some postcards that Becky made that have um, kind of the schedule of some of the Advent and Christmas events that we are having. Um, so if you would like to use one, it's set up as a postcard so you could send it to somebody and invite them to join you for one of these events or for the Christmas services, um, or as, as your own reminder, you could take it, but you could take one and give to somebody and use it as an invitation to invite others to be a part of things that are happening during Advent. Um, so, and just a reminder today, uh, Children and Youth Sunday School does not meet today, but the adult class is meeting. So Woody is ready to start First John. So starting a new book of the Bible, so the study will be on First John. Uh, beginning this morning. And other things happening with the arrival of Advent in this new church year, there are quite a few th new things and events happening, and some of them are this week. So tomorrow at 6.30 at the Eastside Walmart, the Sharing Christmas uh, shopping is happening. So we received a, the name of a family with three teenagers, two boys and a girl as our family that we are helping have Christmas this year. So if you would like to be a part of the shopping, just meet at the Walmart. Are we meeting at the, the grocery door or the other door? The, meet by the subway door. That's, I think, the one that's on the west side. So meet by the subway in the Walmart to go shopping. So if you like to shop for people, um, meet Brian there and we'll spend some money <laughs> for, for this family. So. Um, so that's tomorrow, and then on Wednesday, of course, the children's, uh, youth, and music groups are meeting at their regular time. Thursday morning at 9.30, Aging Gracefully is meeting, and the program is the people who come. Um, it'll be to share a memory, or what is, what is it about Advent or Christmas that makes the season arrive for you? Is there a particular thing that, that is special, that means something that says yes? Advent and Christmas are here uh, this year again. So that's Thursday morning at 9.30. Friday is the movie night for kindergartners through fifth grade. So that's here at the church. And um, if you know you're coming, you can RSVP on our face the Facebook event or talk to Lisa Jasmer just so she has an idea for how much pizza to order. So, but it's uh, for kindergartners through fifth grade. And then Saturday, the Women of Grace are having their Christmas luncheon at 11.30, and today is the last day to get tickets for that um, so that we can get a count into the caterer. So um, if you're interested in that, that's Saturday at 11.30 for the, all the Women of Grace. Um, and then, let's see, um, in the Narthex, you can order a poinsettia still. There are order forms for poinsettias if you'd like to help decorate the church for Christmas. You can buy a 2023 calendar from Brian. <laughs> um, you can leave socks and mittens on the mitten tree, which will go to various ministries around town. And if you are somebody who ships Christmas presents and you need bubble wrap, we got a box of like one chime that came in this giant box filled with bubble wrap. So <laughs> Becky thought, maybe somebody needs bubble wrap for Christmas. So if you do, it's on the table by the the thermometer about the HVAC. So they're free for the, if you need the box, take the box. <laughs> so that is out in the narthex. 
So and just a reminder of upcoming events, the choir cantata will be December 11th at 6 in the evening, followed by supper. And the children's Christmas program is December 18th at 4 o'clock. And Coco and Carols is Wednesday, December 14th. So we'll have uh, cookies and then sing Christmas carols um, in the sanctuary. And then also we will be receiving and recognizing uh, new members on December 11th. So all kinds of activities that are um, coming up and just invite you to participate as you have time and as you have interest as we celebrate this season when we uh, remember once again how Jesus came to earth. So those are all the announcements I have uh, this morning and I would invite you now to stand as we turn to our order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. And we sing the first verse of our Advent song and opening hymn. Isaiah the prophet foretold the arrival of the Son of God. We wait upon the Lord. The word of God will be revealed to us. We keep our eyes open for him. The power of the Most High will rest in him. We magnify the Lord of hope. Helps us cope that we in all things put our trust upon our Savior, good and just. With Mary, we listen and learn as we ponder the news that Jesus is on the way. Let us allow the will of God to work in us as we wait for his son. Like the angel Gabriel, we have an exciting announcement to share. Let us share the story of the coming Christ with all those around us. In days of old, the people prayed for one to come for the sea state to battle sin and death and grave to grant us grace his people save. Jesus enters into a world that was against him, but he comes to be for us. In confidence and faith. Born in the stable and straw to rescue us all. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. So glad you're here. Is your brother going to come? Here he comes. Hello. All right. 
Do you see anything different about the church today? There's only two kids. Only two kids. <laughs> There's Riker over there, but he's kind of little. All right, do you see anything different about the church um, today? <gasps> the nativity. Uh -huh. and, a Christmas tree. and a Christmas tree. Do you have anything at your house that's changed? A Christmas tree? Do you have one at your house? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Well, okay. Well, we yeah. have a small Angel. one outside. Okay. Well, why do we have those things? Because it's Christmas. <gasps> it's almost Christmas. Do you know what season it is at church? Did you hear Pastor Siri say a word that started with A? Advent. And Advent, Advent means that pretty soon, who's gonna come? Uh, Santa Claus. Yep. And also my mom, our mom and dad, but mine needs to switch to Santa on Christmas. Who's gonna be but, born on Christmas? The big one is Uncle <laughs> Noah's. Okay. Who's gonna be born on Christmas? Jesus. Yeah, Advent is about Jesus coming. We're going to talk about a guy who was around way before Jesus was even born. His name is Isaiah. And you know what you're going to do with me today? What? We're going to scream in church. Can you do that with me? <laughs> okay. Our story today, if you're at home, is on page 164, God Will Bring Peace. Isaiah was a special man who gave people messages from God. You repeat after me, say it really loud. He had to tell the people. Trust God. Ready? Trust, Trust God, God, he said with excitement. Count on God to take care of you. Count, Count on, on God, God to take care of you. Someday God will send us the Messiah. Someday God will send us the Messiah. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. The great Savior and King. Isaiah shared a message about a time in the future when everyone would get along and live together in peace. He said, soon the mountain where the temple of God will become the highest mountain of all. People will shout, let's hurry to the mountain. We will learn about God there. God will settle arguments between people. They will stop making weapons that hurt each other. Instead, they will make tools like rakes and shovels that will be helpful. People will not go to war against each other anymore. Then we will all live in the light of God together. Remember that word from the title? Peace. Yeah, when God comes, he'll bring us peace. And we can be the light and tell people that who's coming at Christmas? Not Santa. Uh, Jesus. Jesus. Yes. And Yes, so you go share this week about Jesus coming, okay? And also, and also, I don't know why I did that angel Yeah. And that's all I <laughs> All right, thanks for coming up. The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. 
The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as, as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Life is a little while, a short moment of waiting. This is how the, the writer Henry Nouwen described life, right? A little while, a short moment of waiting. Henry Nouwen is a Catholic priest who wrote a lot about discipleship and spirituality and how do you live your faith in everyday life, um, especially in a community of believers and in serving the neighbor. And part of the Advent theme this year uh, relates to some of the writings of Henry Nouwen. So I have some quotes from him, but this is the first one. Life is a little while, a short moment of waiting. But then he goes on to add, he said, but life is not empty waiting. It is to wait full of expectation. To wait full of expectation. Perhaps on this Thanksgiving weekend you have been waiting with expectation for something. Maybe you were waiting for family to arrive to celebrate the holiday. Or were you waiting to see the SDSU Pride of the Dakotas marching band in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Were you waiting to get somewhere to your extended family or to be with friends? Or maybe you were just waiting for some food to get done so you could eat, right? A lot of expectant waiting. We're waiting, but something is gonna happen after this waiting. So we know what it is to wait and to wait with expectation. Um, as Advent begins, we um, always have readings on this first Sunday that have to do with Jesus' second coming. Because during Advent, we celebrate that Jesus came, Jesus comes in the presence, and Jesus will come again. So we always sort of hear the ending 
as we begin a new church year about Jesus will come again. And there will be a day when the promise of God is fulfilled and the kingdom will come in all its fullness. Jesus will come again in glory. And um, people have always tried to figure out when that might be. We had a readings from Luke a few weeks ago kind of on this same theme and this same idea and people try to figure out you know when it's gonna be right so we can know for sure and the disciples had asked Jesus that and he says we don't know we don't know we won't know we can't know the day or the hour when Jesus will return and bring the kingdom in its fullness. And Jesus says, even Jesus doesn't know, right? The angels don't know. The Son of Man doesn't know. Only God knows. And it will come, perhaps, like a thief in the night. Or it will come when people are in the middle of an ordinary day, working in the field, grinding meal together, doing those daily tasks and jobs and work. All we know is that the day will come because God has said it will. We know that there will be the fullness of time and Jesus will come and bring the kingdom in all its fullness. That day when we will not know war anymore, the day that Isaiah talked about in his lesson. Right? Now the idea of the end coming and coming suddenly can be frightening to many people. Right? Um, what, 10 or 15 years ago, there was that whole series of books, the Left Behind series, and that part of that idea of that comes from our text for today. You know, there's two in the field, one is taken, one is left. Two women grinding, one, that somebody will be left behind. But the kind of the thread of that series was, was based on fear, right? Make people scared enough that they'll turn to God. And there is a sense in our faith life that we, we live in, in fear of God, but it's that sense of awe at God's almighty power. And God's intent is never to scare us into the kingdom. God does not work through fear. God works through love, right? Perfect love casts out all fear. So as we live as the people of God in expecting, ex waiting with expectation we are not to be afraid of the coming of the Son of Man. Um, you know, the end will come, and it says some will, be one, some will be taken, some will be left. And we don't need to be afraid that we're one of those. And actually, this is kind of a side note in my thinking this week that I'll share. In my pastor's text study, I go to a Bible study every week that a group of pastors, and we study the readings for the week just to share ideas and encourage one another for our sermons. Um, Somebody in my group this week said, you know, this text in Matthew about one being taken, one being left, it really doesn't tell you which is the good thing, right? <laughs> is it good to be taken? Is it good to be left and vice versa? Um, and, and his thinking was, after all, like in the book of Revelation, when it talks about the coming of the kingdom and the end, the kingdom of God actually comes down to earth, right? John says, I saw the new heaven and the new earth coming down from God to here so that our world is transformed into the new heaven and the new so do, so do we want to be left <laughs> in this new heaven and new earth and I, you know this, this is like I don't mean to get distracted but but sometimes we do get distracted like that it's like worrying about am I going to be one of the good ones or one of the bad ones and that distraction and that anxiety that comes with that distraction can kind of pull us away from the main focus of what Jesus is talking about. And what Jesus is talking about, really, is knowing and trusting that we are one of God's people. We are one of God's people. So whether it's a good thing to be taken or a bad thing, whatever, whatever the good thing is, <laughs> that's us. We are a part of that that we have the promise of living in the new heaven and the new earth, in the kingdom in all its fullness. We have that promise, and we know and we can be assured of that because of what Jesus has done, because of what God has done in Jesus. And that is that Jesus came the first time 
to redeem us, right? to save us from our sin, to defeat all those things that would make us fearful and anxious, sin, death, and the power of evil, as Luther always puts it, and that we know the end of the story. We know the end of God's story. We know the end of our story is that we are a part of that coming kingdom. So when the day comes, we will be with Jesus in the kingdom, in the new heaven and the earth new earth and we, and we know that that is true because we have the life that Jesus gives through his death and resurrection that he came to forgive us and to make us children of God one of those who was named a beloved son or daughter so as we wait for that coming we live trusting that whether God comes as a thief in the night or in the middle of one of our ordinary days we will be okay because we belong to God. That happened in baptism. We were joined to the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we will be okay, because we are one of God's own. So Henry Nouwen goes on to say kind of about this, as we live, waiting for that day and waiting for that time, he goes on to say, the knowledge that God will indeed fulfill the promise to renew everything and will offer us a new heaven and new earth makes the waiting exciting. So we're not supposed to be afraid, we're supposed to be excited, right? And he says, we can already see the beginning of the fulfillment. Nature speaks of it every spring. People speak of it whenever they smile. The sun, the moon, and the stars speak of it when they offer us light and beauty. And all of history speaks of it when amid all devastation and chaos, men and women arise who reveal the hope that lives within them. Right? We are people who have that hope living within us, right? and we can speak that hope. Um, and so, as we wait with expectation, we can look at these signs of God's presence in our world, of Jesus being here already, that, that now and describes as unfolding all around us, and we can be excited, knowing that God is still at work in this world, bringing life. So then what does this waiting, you know, also with expectation look like? Now, and to quote him again says, it's to point to the signs of the kingdom to come, to speak about the first rays of the day of God, to witness to the many manifestations of the Holy Spirit around us. It is to walk in the light of the Lord, as Isaiah said, right? And to shake off our sleep and live in the day, as Paul writes. That's what Paul wrote to the Romans, right? It's to stop sleeping and wake up because by now our salvation is nearer than when we first began to believe, right? Each day it draws nearer, right? The night is nearly over, daylight is on the way, so let us throw off everything that belongs to darkness and equip ourselves for the light. Now Jesus is coming again, and we know that Jesus is already here, and we meet him in water and word, in bread and wine, in one another, just in all the signs of nature as now and wrote about, and in people who live their faith and hope in the world, and of shining a light into devastation and chaos. We know that Jesus is here. And as Advent begins once again, we know that God gives us signs of Jesus' presence. So I, I would encourage you to be intentional in these weeks looking for the ways that he is here, for he is bringing light and life to all. And you have that assurance that when he does come again, he comes again for you. So live to be a sign of his presence so that all who are looking for him may also come to know him and to have that assurance as well. Amen. Let's stand as we sing, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers.
we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to greet those around you with Christ's peace and turn to the camera and share peace with those who are other places who are typing in greetings of peace to you. And then you may be seated. I do want to give you thanks for your tithes and for your offerings with the gifts you send to the church and bring to the church. We are doing ministry to reach out with the good news uh, of the gospel in so many places. Um, so thank you for that. And as we sing our offering song, um, if there's anybody with noisy offering, they can bring it up to the can, which is now by the pulpit since it, the manger scene is here. So we sing, wait for the Lord. Mm -hmm. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken your church across the globe to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. God, in your mercy, God of wonder, the earth's bounty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats, preserve the wild places, and protect endangered plants and animals. God, in your mercy. God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. And we pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth and in Ukraine and in all the places of war and conflict. Watch over all those who are deployed. God, in your mercy. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger. Comfort the grieving, especially Roger and Sherry Schumacher on the death of his sister and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care, especially those we name in our hearts and those on our prayer list, including Jerry, Crystal, Woody, Maxine, Dorothy, and Larry. God, in your mercy. God of community, you are present when we gather in your name. Guide congregations in transition or conflict. Give wisdom to congregational councils and call committees and ministry leaders. Keep us alert 
to unexpected opportunities for mission. God, in your mercy. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you. We trust that you will bring us into the community of all the saints with, with rejoicing. God, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we join together in the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And would you rise for the benediction? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. We sing Hark a Thrilling Voice. Thank you.